Old Guffaw George was notorious for his tall tales in our little town of Smokesville, that is nestled deep, inside the Appalachian Hills. The latest one he said was so unbelievable, that we all thought that the old man had gone mad. Before that, let me explain a little bit about his name. He was called Guffaw George for a reason. After spinning one of his tales when someone asked him to prove it, or if it was another tale, he would go into this loud, boisterous laughter. It would be very confusing to us listeners, especially the young ones, as to whether that was a yes or no. And he would go into silence, caressing his bulging beer tummy. The latest tale that was doing the rounds, was something about a magic mirror. Old Guffaw George, to give him the credit, was the only well-traveled one in our town of 95 souls. Legend has it that, he had seen all the big oceans in the world, when he was a sailor in his youth. He had been to the exotic Orient. He claimed that his ship was once berthed in India for a month, and he had even met a Maharaja, and was his guest. He claimed that the Maharaja had 20 elephants, and his wife was more beautiful than Cleopatra. He claimed that the Maharaja and his queen wore so much jewels, embedded with precious gems, that having one stone would ensure you a lifetime of savings. No one believed or took to heart old Guffaw George's ranting anymore. But there was one person in our little town, who always thought that the man was telling the truth. And that he was doing it in a manner, that it made it seem that he was bluffing. His admirer, was none other than my Uncle Vinny. Just to clarify, that was great grandma's brother. Uncle Vinny told dad and mom that, most of what Guffaw George was saying was true. My dad would often end up arguing about Guffaw George with Vinny, saying that he was just an old fool, trying to make himself important. Do you know what his latest bluff is? My dad popped this question to Uncle Vinny. What is it? Asked Uncle curiously. Me, mom, and my sister who was 11, and just two years younger than me, sat up in our dinner chairs, craning our ears and necks, eager to know what Pops was going to say. The liar claims that he saw a man in Oklahoma City with a mirror box, that can do a painting or take a picture of a person, and you don't need an artist. I have no clue what take is supposed to mean. A picture of someone is done and there is no artist. My mom went into her one of her delirious laughter, that was sometimes sweet to watch, but other times mighty annoying. How can you create a picture without an artist? That man is unbelievable. My mother shook her as she swallowed a spoonful of potato broth. The guy was dead serious. He said it is real, as real as you and me sitting in this room. My dad informed us, half irritated, half angry. I felt like punching him on the face and stop lying, the fellow was drunk. What else can you expect? He is full of horse shit, about this and that, imagining about things that only he had seen. Pops, language. My mom warned my dad, before he could say some other bad word, in the presence of us kids. There was a knock on the door, and I ran to open it. Who on earth do you think was at our doorstep, but good old Guffaw George? My dad was annoyed when he looked at him, from the dinner table. He was in a foul mood, and not interested in inviting the town liar into his home. Uncle Vinny, however, looked happy, and called George in. It was his sister's home after all. Guffaw George, unlike his jovial self, was in a bad mood too. The smiling face had been replaced by a serious visage. There was something weird. Looked like he was bleeding. Did dad actually punch him? Moments before, he had said that he only felt like punching. But he had executed the deed, and not thought of it. Out of the blue, old Guffaw George pulled out a gun and threatened dad, and asked him to apologize. Uncle Vinny jumped on him, and in the process, got hit on his forehead. It is not certain if Guffaw George pulled the trigger or if it was an accident. The small crowd that had followed George, swarmed into our house and separated dad and George, as they swung at each other. My mom and sister, and all the women folk who had come were screaming. Magic mirror picture you bootlicking? Dad let out a string of profanities. What was it about the mirror picture tale, that should enrage dad, is something I cannot understand at this date. Uncle Vinny was pronounced dead, and mom was screaming seeing her brother lying dead. Guffaw George escaped the gallows because witnesses said he did not fire the gun. He was only aiming at dad, threatening him. It was Uncle Vinny who thought he was going to shoot. He fell on the gun, accidentally pulled the trigger, and shot himself dead. Guffaw George and Great Grandpa became pals after the death of Uncle Vinny. But they became friends only after a fellow arrived in the town fair, two years later, 
with a magic mirror box, claiming he could do pictures of people without an artist. They took a picture themselves. The whole family was in the picture, minus Uncle Vinny, who had given his life for it. Who can believe that one could make pictures without an artist or painter? Technology has truly gone places, and we are living in modern times.